Ooh, that's going. All right. <clears throat> Looks like this is my next <clears throat> document to check out. Concept of worship in Islam. And, uh, oh boy. Where do you even start this thing? Jeez. <clears throat> it's like two long videos ahead of, and not very fun either. But let's give it a shot. <clears throat> In the name of Allah, the most gracious and the most merciful, not to mention humble, the concept of worship <clears throat> in Islam is comprehensive. Yeah, so I gather. It regulates the human life on all levels. The individual, the social, the economic, the political, and the spiritual. All activities are considered by God as acts of worship, if done in conformance to his guidance. Now, where's his guidance? Well, there's this Bunch of writings all put together a long time ago. That's almost as good as a conversation with God, mono we mono. Besides, you get to pray to him five times a day. I don't think he talks back, though. I think you mostly just tell him how great he is. I don't know. Do you get to actually ask for intercessionary miracles ever? Do Muslims do that? Christians do it all the time. You know, they want their their sports team to win they want their political candidate to win and they're you know bombarding heaven with their requests now i figure muslims they pray five times a day but i've never been a muslim so our prayer is the same because god's god's the same they say he just didn't have a kid um I just wonder, you know, I mean, do they, do you just compliment and flatter God or do you actually request things? I hope you, I mean, it's a Christian thing to request things. Hey, God, I really dig you, man, but uh, hey, could you help me out with a few things? You know, We're worried about the harvest and all that stuff. I don't know. Like I said, never been a Muslim, you know, never even been in a mosque. Uh, all right. Anyway. The concept of worship in Islam is misunderstood by many people, including some Muslims. All right, I don't feel so bad now. Worship is commonly taken to mean performing ritualistic acts such as prayers, fasting, charity, etc. Et Should charity be a, a ritual? Shouldn't it just come from the heart? You know, you ought to be able to look at anybody that's down in their luck and go, ooh, that could, just, that could so easily have been me. And that person feels cold and hot and pain and hungry and all that like me. So let me wait for a, an order from my religious overlords so I can go over and do something nice for that individual. Maybe give them a little helping hand. Yeah, it's just, I'm glad, it, I'm glad charity gets done. I just think that, um, you know, just being good for good's sake ought to mean something. At least, at least it does to me. This limited understanding of worship is only one part of the meaning of worship in Islam. Well, I did ask to be educated. This looks rather wordy, too. I'm going to get my wish. They're going to explain it all to me. The traditional definition of worship in Islam is a comprehensive definition that includes most everything in an individual's activities. I'm glad they said almost. 
Jeez. <laughs> Some things are just private. The definition goes something like this. Worship is an all-inclusive term for all that God loves of external and internal sayings and actions of a person. That's nice. It's nice when people are real. Not always easy to see, but God knows everything, right? In other words, worship is everything one says or does for the pleasure of Allah. Okay. This is, of course... Includes rituals as well as beliefs, social activities, and personal contributions to the welfare of society. Much repetition there. You just said the same thing a different way. Please don't pad these. They're long enough. Hmm. Islam looks at the individual as a whole. That's a good thing. You know, it's not always easy to do because you can't know everything about people, but yeah, it's nice to at least be. Honestly, you know, you're, you still got a brain if you remain curious about people and things, you know? So, yeah, try to know as much about a person as I can and get a more dimensional picture, you know? But, you know, God can just do that and should... Pop might even know all that before he made you. Maybe. I don't know. Jury's still out on that one. I've heard arguments both ways. One is required to submit oneself completely to Allah. As the Quran instructed the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to do. Say, truly, my prayer and my service of sacrifice, my life and my death are all for Allah, the cherisher of the worlds. So, no partner hath he. This I am commanded, and I am the first of those who bow to his will. How's he for figurative speaking, right? Right? Yeah. All right, that's Surah 6, verse 162 to 163. The natural result of this submission, what if you're not submissive or, do or dominant? What if you're just like, you know, even keel? You know, I just don't do submission, and but then again, I'm not into dominating, so. I do own a leather jacket, but that's about it. And boots. But yeah, yeah, none of that submission dominating stuff. None of that S&M stuff. Islam being a complete way of life requires that its followers model every aspect of their life according to its teachings, religious or otherwise. This might sound strange to some people who think of religion as a personal relationship between the individual and God. Yeah, that's the one I grew up here in. Uh, having no impact on one's daily activities. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, that's how Christians compartmentalize so well, especially these modern prosperity types. You know, <laughs> the ones that find Jesus a little too woke. <laughs> All right. As a matter of fact, 
Islam does not think much of mere rituals when they are performed mechanically and have no influence in one's inner self. So no fake in it. See, we could do that in Christian circles, and I bet a lot of people get by with all that shit. For a long time, I had to go there and fake it. I know all about it. Fake it to fit in. It is not righteous that ye turn your faces towards east or west. But it is righteous to believe in Allah and the last day. And the angels and the book and the messengers disband of your substance out of love for him. For your kin, for orphans, for the needy, for the wayfarer, for those who ask, and for the ransom of slaves. To be steadfast in prayer and give zakat, obligatory annual charity, to fulfill contracts which ye have made, and to be firm and patient in pain and adversity, and throughout all periods of panic, such are the people of the truth, the God-fearing. And that's Surah 100, wait, Surah 2, Verse 177. And then we get into the heart of the matter. So I'll leave this video here. We need to ruminate what we've got so far. That was a lot, wasn't it? <laughs> Apparently it's a little different, maybe. So this is interesting. I'm not bothered by things being different. I think it's interesting. Let me know if you learned anything, if this changed your life, or any of that, or if you just have an idea. Um, stay tuned. So the next part's a whopper.